you know what this boat needs? A tachometer. That would be, that'd be handy. For my little racing fishing boat, that's important stuff to have. Just so happens, I have one. I thought I did, where'd I go? Ah. Right here. Perfect. Got it. Really don't have anywhere to put it. And this is the size they come. A little over three inches, I think it's three and three eighths or something. And I just don't have the room for it on the dashboard. So I've been thinking about this for a few weeks now. Uh, the original plan was to get one of the gauge pods like you'd see from Fast and Furious movie and mount it, you know, right out there somewhere. The problem is those they don't really make for, for boat gauges. Now these are standard two inch gauges I believe, but this one is not. They make a three inch, sure, but not a three and a whatever size this is. So that was a problem. So the next thought I had, I can make a little mini dashboard here and put it right there. But I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have a little gauge pot. So the plan was to try to figure out how I could make a gauge pot. There's a guy on YouTube that does a lot of bent metal hammering where he gets a form and he hammers metal, make a little, you know, shapes. He made a dustpan. If you watch this old Tony, old Tony made the handle for it. He made the dustpan. So I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become an expert at that real quick and make one. But that's... Let's be honest, I have no idea how to do that. So that was out. The next plan was to tell my dad to figure it out, have him make me something. But he's he's busy making my kitchen. So yeah, I was kind of kind of done for. So one day while browsing through the internet for old obsolete parts that I want, I stumbled across one of the accessory manuals. And in those accessory manuals, I found out Evanrude knew of and solved this problem back in the 70s, and that's what this little kit is. This little kit is a tachometer or speedometer gauge pod. It's made to be, it's got all hardware instructions. It's made to be mounted somewhere on the dashboard and give you a little adjustable gauge pod. Exactly what I wanted. Problem is, newer tachometers are massive. This thing is huge. So right off the bat, you can see that these are going to stick out of the gauge pot. Now, I have no problem cutting these off, making it narrower. The problem is the taper of the pod starts right about there, and our gauge is another half an inch too long. It's a tight fit, and I mean, it kind of works, but it, it, it doesn't work. So that's a little unfortunate. However, due to my parts hoarding of good neat old stuff turns out I have this old gauge from the 70s which is what is made to fit into this gauge pot now it looks a little big but I think I think it'll be fine plan is to see if I can make it work I think I can I don't know if the tachometer works but I'm gonna hook it up wire it. fingers crossed for the best so this video is basically going to be how to install a tachometer. Now I have a unique situation on my hands with a little mini dash, but most people won't. Now I know most people already know how to install a tachometer. Obviously this may not be for you. This is more for the people that are, I don't know, maybe they just freshly got a boat and they want a tachometer, don't know how to put one in. I'm here to show you. Different outboards are going to have different processes, but as far as Zevenrud and Mercury go, pretty much the same. So if you're working with an engine that has a control box that looks like this, this video is for you. If you don't have that controller, if you have something else, maybe a binnacle or a concealed side mount, pop open your engine. If you have a red plug, keep watching. Let's say you have a points and coils motor such as this, no electronics, no uh, anything. Eh, you're not going to like it. You can still get a tachometer for one of these little things, but it's not going to be one on your dashboard. You can get one of the tiny tacks, which is an inductive type tachometer. Uh, wraps around one of the spark plug wires, gives you a tachometer signal, and you can add engine hours and all kinds of stuff to it. But as far as the dashboard goes, eh, not so much. First and foremost, to do this project, 
we are going to need a tachometer harness, which is this little guy. Little little plug on the back, three little wires coming out, and that's all we need. Well, that a drill bit hand tools. Okay, you need other stuff, but this is this is the start of it. This is our key component. Now there was an aftermarket company making these. Uh, they're no longer available from the dealer. I think everybody bought them all up, but you can still find them uh, used and usually in pretty good condition. Even if you have one where it's all gray and sun beaten, this rubber is so thick, usually there's still plenty of life left in the harness. So you're gonna need a tachometer harness. Uh, apparently the company making them ran into uh, supply issues with the coronavirus and they are so godly expensive it's not even funny. But you can uh, send them an email and still get one. So that is what we're gonna need, one of those. Now, I showed you that gauge earlier, my old day. It doesn't use your traditional tack harness like what I just showed you. This, this is a little more universal. I mean, you can do anything with this. This silly thing, I mean, you, know, you do the same thing with it, really. But it's, it's all built into one. And on the back of our gauge pot, we have this tiny little hole. You know, it's silly. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut the wiring off. I'm going to extend it a little bit to go inside of the dashboard. I ran over to Radio Shack real quick, picked myself up a little terminal block. So my plan is to put the terminal block under the dash somewhere. I'm going to run our tachometer harness wiring to the terminal block. If it fits, I'll go ahead and check that in a few. Anyway, so it'll go to the terminal block, and then the other side will hook up to the new wires I'm going to make for the tachometer, plug in, and when I want to add more silly gauges on top of the uh, dashboard there, I'll be able to tap into these plugs. So that's that's a little more advanced than I think most people are going to need to do. I think most people, you're just going to need this tachometer harness. So ignoring the old rigging I'm doing, hypothetically, you have your gauge. On the back of the gauge, usually tells you what does what. This one does it two ways. It has little, uh, I don't know what you call them, I guess when they mold this, they mold in what they do too, as well as our label that tells us where everything goes. Now, as far as the pole setting, read the uh, instruction manual that comes with the tack for that one because I have no idea. Um, let's get into how this wiring works real quick. Now, allow me to show you how this tachometer harness works. In the back of the controller here, you have this plug. You may or may not have a rubber cap over this plug. If you do, pull it off and you'll see this plug. That plug is gonna be our signal wires that we need, our tachometer harness, the rubber end, plugs right into there, just like so. And now we have three wires coming out the back. Black is battery ground, gray is our tachometer signal, purple, is switch battery positive or hot I guess you can call black earth or ground doesn't matter black is negative purple battery positive switch battery positive allow me to demonstrate I have the purple wire off our tack signal hooked up to the positive of this little LED indicator bulb and I have the ground of the bulb grounded to the boat Turn the switch, power comes on. On comes our light. Now, if you have a fiberglass boat, you can't just ground it anywhere. If you're not, that's where our tech uh, harness comes into play because we also have the battery ground. So again, key on, light on. Understand how that works now? Good. So, if you were connecting this to a standard tachometer. Now these terminals, they don't really fit this gauge. This is just a demo. On the back here we have bat, ground, signal. So battery positive. Ground is going to be our black. Signal would be our gray. And that is that is all that needs to hook up. Now we also have this little tab. That is for lights. If you have a switch for your lights, positive there. Turn the switch on. Gauge lights up. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. My modifications to the tachometer are done. 
And according to the instructions here, I need to remove this stud so that I can install our tack. Perfect. Now I need to use the one inch plastic mounting nut. All right, it looks pretty straight into the pod there. Doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I gotta hand it to Evner. When you get one of their kits, like that little tachometer pod mount kit thing, they really, really do give you everything you th they think you could need. So that kit came with all kinds of different plastic adapters to install different types of tachometers. It came with little rubber washers to go inside the mount. It, it came with little pivoting washers, nylon washers, so that you could rotate this a little bit as as desired. It, just has everything. So not bad. I am now going to use my Radio Shack terminal block, make my connections, and then afterwards I will go into the dashboard try to find somewhere to mount this. All right, the connections are made. Black, black, purple, purple, gray, gray, and blue, which I'm guessing is the light inside of there, which I'm sure it is. Um, I wasn't going to hook up the light, but I'm here. Really not that hard, so I think I'll tap it into the little uh, uh, nav light switch, which would be pretty easy because that to the switch, it's done. Also, I have a little uh, volt gauge, which I'll be installing at some point. Um, the terminal block, reason I like it is it's, it's easy. I just tap into, you know, the, one of these two right here, and away I go. I have another one, the uh, 8 position, which I, I, did, I thought was silly to try to use, just don't need it. But it might be handy if I'm going to install like a, a temperature gauge or a tilt trim gauge, or which actually it already has that. I just don't think it works. So I don't know. Handy little setup for all kinds of stuff. All right, I have decided to not be lazy and hook up the navigation lights. Hey, look at that. So you got to remember, this gauge is 30, 40 years old. So a little incandescent bulb in there, still working. All right, now turn the key to get power to the gauge. The gauge should give us some life. Needle moved, so that's the only real test we can do. We know it's getting ground because the light's on. We know the light works because the light's on. Um, power. Well, tachometer signal, and it's probably getting its uh, power signal and tack signal since that needle moved. So as far as testing goes, that's as good as we can go without starting the motor up, which I don't feel like doing because it's kind of raining outside right now. But that is the gist of it. Now, you may be saying to yourself right now, well, that's great, but I don't have that kind of controller. I don't have a little plug in the back. I have one of those power pilots. So you have one of these. It's still a controller. Let's pop this cover off real quick. You see our bundles of wires. And hanging out here in this bundle of wires is what remains of a gray wire. This should have been a little bit longer, not had a butt splice on it, but that's your tachometer signal right there. Now, purple with white is your choke slash primer. You don't want to use that. But here is your purple, and inside of there is your black. So you could tap into these, depending on how detailed you wanted to get. You could take the top half of the controller apart, tap into the purple and black wire where the key are with a little ring terminal, and add it in there. Or you can power it elsewhere. You're calling that one. But that is how to get your tachometer signal out of one of these controllers. Now you still may be saying to yourself, well, I don't have either one of those controllers. Mine is a concealed side mount and a factory boat plug, I don't have a tachometer or the controller to add it in. Well, you do have one of these, your red plug harness. 
on the back of that red plug you'll have this which will plug into your factory dashboard somewhere and inside of this plug we have our gray wire our purple wire and our black wire everything we need to install the tachometer now I want you to keep in mind too the purple wire is used elsewhere so is the black so you can't just cut these and run them straight to your tachometer they need to go back to the rest of the gauges and the uh, the key switch but tachometer is there probably doesn't go anywhere else so you can probably cut that one but I would just strip it down and tap into these wires and connect them to your tack now you still may be saying to yourself well I I had my boat rigged and wired by some hack on Craigslist I don't have any one of those things well, remember earlier I said the red plug if we have a look inside of this hack wiring job you can see this harness and over here you can see we have a gray plug along with the uh, purple hanging out and a black wire there. The reason being the red plug controller harness that the uh, factory produced, every one of them has that gray wire inside of there. Now there are very few exceptions. Let's say you have one of these 20 to 35 horsepowers. Somebody added the uh, remote electric start onto it, but they didn't remove the flywheel to install a stator. You're not gonna have a stator to get the tachometer signal. So you're not going to be able to do this and your red plug harness is going to be kind of useless because you don't have a stator. If you have a stator, it'll work. Now there are some 9.9 slash 15s out there that do use a red plug harness. However, the pin configuration is different and it doesn't have the tachometer signal inside of there. So that's rare. I've only seen, I think, two of them in my life. But they are out there. Don't take this as gospel. There are some exceptions, but for the mass, vast majority of boats out there, if you have that red plug, you'll be able to add a tachometer. Now, I showed you the points and coil type 6 horsepower earlier. Now, I have this newer 6 horsepower here. Let's open her up. We have these coils and a power pack over on the other side, but no stator. Now, these engines, they do offer a kit for it for a remote, I think it's a light charging kit or a battery charging kit. With that, a stator gets installed under the flywheel. With the stator, we can we could install a tachometer onto this, this little motor if we wanted to. A lot of work, got to add a stator, terminal block, and run a wire, but it's po fully possible. And really, if you've been working on outboards for a while, it's really not too bad. Every time I show a controller, I get asked one simple question. What does this do? That is the friction block. So you turn this in, and it moves this little lever inside the controller, which makes this tighter. So I don't know where it's at right now, but wherever it is, I like it, so I'm not going to mess with it. But basically, you turn it in, it gets tighter, turn it out, it gets looser. That's all it does. That beep you hear? That's a warning alarm to let you know that your little beep, buzzer beeper thing is working inside of here. Do you really need a tachometer? No. But it's good for engine diagnostics, propeller selection, that kind of stuff. So it has its, has its uses. This boat didn't have one, and it's been doing fine for 35 years. How old is this boat? I don't know how old this boat is. So you don't need it, but it's a nice little thing to have. You also don't need a speedometer, but eh. What I do like is a depth gauge. Running in shallow rivers, that depth gauge, lifesaver. Or, well... Prop saver, I guess. Well, I suppose that's it for now. Any questions, let me know. Let me know what you think of my gauge pod there. And let me know what other gauge install videos you'd like to see.